multi-process welder TIG welding review. It's the DecaPower PMC 205 BV and today we are going to test out the TIG welding function on this for doing a cap pass on this stainless steel type 316 schedule 40 pipe. Did most of it with the other welder but um, it's a new day. I didn't finish it yesterday so today might as well try it out and see how it handles that, right? So Chris Wynarski is back again on another welding fabrication video for you guys. Today is August 26 or 27, 2025. It's about 90 degrees right now in sunny Dunedin, Florida. Partly cloudy, but it's getting hot. I can feel it already. Going right back to it, we're going to test it out. Now this is going to be, I think I'm going to do a 532 wire for the cap on this. And this has a 2T, 4T function. 2T is where you press the button and keep it held in while you're going. And then once you're, one, once you're done, you let off and let, it'll stop. 4T is where you can start down here, hit the button, start it, and then it's going, 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 going. You only gotta hold the button. Then when you wanna stop, you hit the button again and it'll stop it. So it saves you from holding the button in and handling your carpal tunnel or whatever you wanna call it. Anyway, we got it hooked up to 220 right now. Got a purge going on, even though I probably don't gotta purge it right now. But anyway, we turn it on, come back to the machine. Now, I'll show you one thing, how to set up your gas stuff. This took me a minute. So your gas just goes straight into the TIG unit, straight back here. And you gotta, you gotta get your own regulator that I know. Mine didn't come with a regulator, but I'll double check with them. And I don't think it comes with the regulator, but you buy them cheap on Amazon for like 20, 30, 40 bucks or something. So don't go buying no $200 when you don't need that. And Amazon's the way to go. You hook it straight up from your regulator to the TIG part right here. Tighten it, don't over tighten it, but then you could even check it with soap and water and a spray bottle and see if you have any leaks coming out of it. And I don't know if this has to be hooked up or not, but I just hook it up anyway, just in case. And that's your plasma spot, which we'll, we'll test everything else in another video, I guess. So oh, for 110, if you had 110 or 120 volt regular house outlet, it only goes up to 120 or 125 amps with, it might be good enough with a eighth inch wire or 332nd, but I'm doing 532, so it might be a little, it might actually work, but I'm gonna do about, I think like 130, 140 amps. So we'll try setting this machine up right here. And I think I gotta tighten the gas. I need a better welder cart for this so I can put the gas on it. But we'll do that right now. I tightened it. We'll turn it on. Double check for leaks. And check your, get your torch out. Set that. And we'll set our pressure to about 30 CFH. And we'll go over to here. Here's where you hit your different settings. So, pulse make, we want. TIG welding function right there and then I gotta figure this stuff out again 4T so we want 2T we want 4T this time and here's how you do your uh, what you call it your pre-flow and post-flow so pre-flow right here I think it is we want to bump that oops pre-flow we want to bump that to the lowest so 0.2 seconds and post flow, we want five seconds as long as we go, can go. Wish that would go up a little higher, but 0.5 is not bad. Just for stainless steel, makes it a little better, but you get just hit the button when it runs out and run the cycle again. And we'll bump our amperage up to maybe like 140, and we'll go from there. I'll show you right here how to hook up your TIG stuff. Now for tungsten, I don't think it comes with tungsten either. A lot of machines don't. But um, you could just go on Amazon and get some tungsten too. Any color works fine. Blue, the 2% lanthanated was one of my favorite. It's good for AC and DC. Any color would really work, except for blue. You don't want green, pure green tungsten. You could get the CK Worldwide laser, which is what this is. So make sure I'm using 332nd tungsten right now, which is probably all you need, unless you want to go thinner comes with a different couple of different size collets and collet bodies but put it on like that and start to thread it in now get your back cap and back it if you have your back cap on first just tighten this and then just back your back cap off 
and make sure uh, then tighten it more because I'll show you in a second right here some people tighten the back cap all the way down like this tighten this on now it doesn't screw on like that's tight right there you can back this off and you tighten this up even more so you want to get your collar and collar body seated in good so back that off get that adjusted good get your cup on like that I like the biggest cup I could go with for uh, steel or stainless I like a gas lens which I might switch this over to but just like that that worked fine there you go so we'll get ready now if you do a lot of TIG welding let me show you something this right here you always check right here and it's a 20 WP26 so to get this size there's two different hardwares on torches 17 18 26 is the bigger stuff they make a 9 and a 20 style, which is small stuff like this. But this is a stubby gas lens, but it has the smaller back cap and really small hardware. But then this one, that's a 26, and this is an 18 because it's water-cooled. So it's the same thing, but just water-cooled. But you could buy a stubby gas lens kit, which makes it a little more comfortable in your hand. Like when you're welding, your wrist is like that. I like to prop like this, and it's just a little more comfortable compared to the other one. Like you're like cocked back like that and your wrist is up too high but the gas lens really helps a lot having that gas screen in there it's almost like a faucet on a, a, a screen on your sink faucet it just helps the gas come out a lot better and allows you to stick your tungsten out a little farther sometimes so it's a lot nicer but this if you don't do a lot of take welding this get you plenty fine they've been using that for years and years and years enough talking i think we can get to it show you one more thing too before i start um Stainless steel, if you don't know a lot about TIG welding, stainless steel, you really don't need to clean. But whenever you're TIG welding, you always want to have bright, shiny metal or as clean, clean as metal as you can. Like you could weld, like just try getting some of that dirt off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just clean metal like this. You can weld right over top. Stainless steel, but if you have uh, carbon steel, black iron, like uh, this piece right here, if you're trying to weld two pieces together and you have all that mill scale on top, it's not gonna weld good. So let me show you. I just done these recently and you gotta grind your mill scale off to bright shiny metal. So I had to grind all that off for there and all off for here, like an inch past where you're gonna be welding is usually pretty good. So I know the heat's on there, but bright shiny metal like that. And I did that whole thing. Otherwise it's not fun at all. And it's really gonna start popping on you and everything. So. Want to get the rust and bright shiny metal cleaner to metal the better it'll weld so that's one tip for you sorry i forgot to show you how to hook up the insides and everything too so um how to hook up the rest of the machine so being that it's tig you want to hook up this part of it so that'll be your function right there this is your lead if you're going to plasma cut you go to that lead tig mig and stick you want to hook it up to that so that's that part right there and then stick or TIG welding, it's always D DC electrode negative. So your electrode goes into that little, it's like a threaded thing right there on the bottom. And here's your electrode thing right here that gives you electrode positive or negative. And you want to bring this into the negative. Otherwise, if it was like something else, you'd bring it over here. So that's that. That's your MIG welding thing. And that's that part sure you don't have any wind by you too if you're outside some of the wind can blow away your argon you need 100 percent argon and if you have fans going it can blow away your argon you'll know if it starts sputtering on you so that's another downside to tig welding all right folks here we go stick out not too far depends on what you're welding All right, let off the button right now. And it's flowing. All right, pretty simple. Just walk in a cup on that pipe. Use a 532 wire, so it's pretty thick, and I had a little bit to fill in, so I'm going a little bit slow. I'm trying to do it all in one pass instead of two smaller passes. So, all depends what you got, so it depends on what wire you want to use. Really, you could have done two eighth inch wires, or eighth inch and a five, or three thirty second wire. But, now I just sped up 
the speed and the edit and app a little bit. And it's not a how to TIG welding video, more of a uh, demonstration of the TIG function on this Deca Power multi process welder. Stay tuned for the full video of this if you want to watch next, though. I'm getting ready to stop it right now, so try to get comfortable up to that button. You can even snap out of this if you want. But get up to that button, hit it, hold that post flow there, and there you go. And then you can bump your post flow again if you need to, but not bad. I do wish the post works perfectly fine for that, but for stainless steel and stuff like this, I wish you could put the post flow a little longer than five seconds, but that's perfectly not a huge deal. And that was actually going pretty good. I'll show you right here. It could be, I don't know if it's a little hot or not, but I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you had a gas lens on that, your color would be a little better, but I think we're doing pretty good. A little spin. And we'll go for more. All right, ready? I don't have an amp meter on it, but I think we're pretty close. All right, start a little back. Purge it for a second. All right, hit the button, start it, let go. Just notice this, this is kind of cool. The top number is your voltage and that differentiates with the tungsten and the base metal of the pipe. So the farther you are, the voltage will change and the closer you are. So it's just showing my difference between I'm not keeping a consistent length. So every time I rock it, it's changing pretty much, which is understandable because you're rocking the torch back and forth, but the closer and accurate you could keep it, the more better I guess it is. But sped this video up about five times. And we seem to go, be going pretty good right now. Getting ready to stop, get my finger ready, comfortable. And snapping out of it, hitting that button is actually kind of nice sometimes because you don't snap out of it and leave a fish eye or crater eye. So that's one reason why I like having that 4T setting. Same thing with our other welder over there compared to just regular scratch start. But we'll check that out. I think I bumped it down. It was 140, now I'm down to 136. And... What do you think? Not going too bad. It's always good if you can to start down as low as you can. Like if you could start down here and work your way all the way to the top, it's better. That way you have a lot, more, lot less starts and stops, but whatever is comfortable for you. If you can only weld this much at a time, that's fine too. Just practice. Okay, so I just made a little short video for the Instagram. Uh, just that last little pass from like here to here, but I think it did that pretty good too. Again, I'm not the best TIG welder, but I could get by and I think that'll work. That was the TIG. I definitely give it a thumbs up and I'm interested to test out the MIG and stick is probably normal, but the plasma cutter too. And I think it does pulse MIG too, which is kind of cool, but I think you need a uh, different gas for pulse MIG. I never pulsed MIG before. Anyway, that was it. Here's your weld. If you have any questions, let me know. And maybe I can answer it for you or something else. Stay tuned for some other videos on it or my other types of videos with all different making projects and everything. So that was that for that. And hopefully you enjoyed that little video on testing the TIG part out on a deck of power. So you can find them on Amazon. I think it's like five, 600 bucks. I don't know if I said that already. For this welder um, for the TIG or for the I don't think it comes with tungsten and I don't think it comes with the regulator mine didn't so again you can buy that cheap on Amazon like 30 bucks don't go spending 100 200 bucks on it and your tungsten you can find on Amazon for like 20 30 bucks to any colors would work so just let me know if you have any questions on the tungsten or regulator or something I can help you out everything is cleaned up all done make sure to wire brush your stainless steel off before it gets while well, it's still pretty warm 
don't do it when it's right away warm, but like don't wait too long after because otherwise it takes a little bit longer for it to, or a little harder for it to come off. So that's that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And yeah, little project, simple, easy, but just figured I'd share it and record it. Um, I know there's better videos of that probably out, but that was just one little thing, one of my jobs throughout the week. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, check out my other uh, videos, YouTube videos and everything. And Instagram at Chris Wonarski, YouTube Wonarski Welding Fabrication, which you're probably watching this on. And sometimes I post on Facebook, but not really Instagram and YouTube. So be sure to like, care, yeah, all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Chris Wonarski. Over and out.